Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official final NFL week number 18 best bets. I think I'll probably continue this on to the wild card round at least, but we are getting to where there's going to be less games, so it's going to be harder to compile 10 best bets, but yes, it is week 18, my top 10 favorite bets, beginning with... Philadelphia traveling to East Rutherford to take on the Giants. I am going with the Eagles minus the five. Now, the Eagles very likely will not win their division as long as Dallas beats Washington, 13-point favorites on the road against a commander's team who is tanking. Philadelphia is going to be a wild card team, but there still is some incentive for the Eagles. They really need a win. They've been playing terribly. They just lost to Arizona. They were winning in that game 21 to 6 at halftime. They lose outright in the second half late in that game. I think they get back on track against the Giants team that kind of is streaky. Yes, they did play very well against the Rams. I don't think they replicate it. The Eagles are going to get back on track. They win this game, and you could find great value on them here, minus the five, considering you look at the analytics. They love Philadelphia on the road, 84% chance to win. That is no joke in the NFL. That speaks to a spread of like nine or 10 points, but we can find good value on Philadelphia. If you do trust them, I know it's hard based on how they've played recently, but I think Philadelphia, they get this win before the wild card weekend. They know they need momentum. Although this could be one of those weird things, I guess the situation, the doomsday situation, if you are betting on Philadelphia, would be Dallas like up 24 to nothing at half. Philadelphia realizes it, and then they rest their players in the second half because their game is virtually meaningless, and then possibly the Giants might be able to cover or win outright. But you also have to understand the Giants very, very, they need to lose this game. Sitting at 5-11, and 11, fall to 5-12, and 12, guarantee yourself a top 7 or 8 pick. We will see in terms of that one. Moving on to number 9, it is the Vikings traveling to Detroit. Detroit sitting at 11-5, and five, very likely going to be the number 3 overall seed in the NFC. There's a slight chance they might be able to move up to number 2, but they are going to probably play their starters in this one. That's why they're minus 5.5. I think they win this game handily. They've got a very solid offense. They're facing a Minnesota team who seems completely beat down at 7-9 and nine coming off that blowout loss, and it's a Minnesota team with Nick Mullins, Josh Dobbs. I can't trust them to cover a 5.5 point spread. Detroit going to be very motivated going into the playoffs winners of their division, especially after that Dallas Cowboys game where it kind of was stolen from them with the penalty, uh, but I have them winning by over five and a half in that one. Moving on to number eight, it is Denver traveling to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders. Vegas, I definitely see winning this game. There's a narrative going around. Their interim head coach, very likely going to be promoted to the full-time head coach. And they're going to want some momentum. I've got them winning this one 24-17 over a Denver team. It's not that Denver's given up at this point, but the situation with Russell Wilson, I don't know. It just seems like the Raiders have a lot more momentum going into this game. Even after the loss to the Colts, they win this game. They improve to 8-9, and nine, and the Broncos drop to 8-9. Drop to and nine. Also, they're only minus 2.5, so if they win on a walk-off field goal... You know, they could win 20-17 to 17 and still cover a very manageable spread against a Denver Broncos team who I've just got no confidence in the Broncos with their quarterback situation right now. Moving on to number seven, it is the Jets traveling to Foxborough to take on the Patriots. Patriots at 4-12, and 12, Jets at 6-10. and 10. The Patriots need to lose this game. Let's just call it what it is. You know, I, they're tanking. Obviously, the players are going to try and win. This just feels like one of those where the Patriots somehow lose. The Jets win this game 21-16. to There's more motivation for the Patriots. The Jets, they could lose this game as well. I mean, there's no reason for them to win it. Possibly move up a few spots in terms of draft position. It's a completely meaningless game. I would say if you really want to bet something, maybe the under Although I did see the under around 33 and a half. That's a pretty low number. And we've had a lot of lower over-unders in the NFL, especially in the second half of the year, that have seemingly all gone over. Now, I'm sure that's not 100% true, but it seems like anytime there's a really low over-under, like you remember that Thursday night uh, Patriots-Steelers game, the over-under was like 30 and... I think the Patriots scored 30 points by themselves, but I do find some decent value in the Jets plus the two and a half. They are given a 51% chance to win if you look at the analytics. Moving on to number six, it is the Seahawks traveling to Arizona. Kind of a nice division matchup here. I guess all these games are division. I believe week 18 they do that. 
I will take the over. I'm getting a big over vibe in this game, and I haven't really predicted many over-unders recently, but I really did. It, it like it smacked me in the face. Both of these teams are going to be scoring a lot, not great on defense. We just saw Seattle and their defense allow a lot of points, a lot of yards to Mason Rudolph and the Steelers' offense. We just saw Kyler Murray and James Conner. We just saw Kyler Murray and James Conner have a very nice performance on the road in Philadelphia. Both of these teams have some momentum. Should be a fun end of the season game. I will take the over. 47.5, maybe a little higher over under than I would like, but it's nothing crazy. You get a score like this. This is almost 60 points combined at 31 to 28. You do have Seattle sitting three-point favorites. I'd probably say if I had to pick, I'd pick Seattle to cover the three-point spread, but I'm not confident in it. Moving on to number five. It is Buffalo traveling to Miami. So this is the huge game. Buffalo sitting minus three on the road. They need to win this game. Very likely to make the playoffs. There still is a chance if the Steelers lose to the Ravens. And also if the Colts lose, they can make it. But Buffalo in a weird spot right now at 10, at 10 and 6. The Dolphins, on the other hand, are in no matter what. And they're dealing with injuries. That That's part of the reason why you do have Buffalo minus the three on the road against a team that has been better than them throughout the entire season. But I don't know, man. How many times this year have we seen Josh Allen on the sideline, dejected, sad? I understand the Bills have you know won like four straight games. They're playing better. It just doesn't feel like their year. Miami's been the better team. You can say the injuries. You can say the motivation factor. You can say Miami's going to be in the playoffs no matter what. But it is important to try and lock down the division so you host playoff games. I think Miami wins this game outright. I like the value plus the three. They're at home. They've been better this year in my opinion. There's good value. So I will go with them to win that game outright. Moving on to number four. It is the Bucks traveling to Carolina. Carolina sitting plus the five and a half. I do love the Panthers in this game. Now, the Panthers are very hit or miss. We saw last week they got destroyed by a backup quarterback in Jacksonville. Bryce Young was horrific. But at the end of the season, they're trying to build on something. I've said from the beginning, I've just never liked Tampa Bay. And just the narrative surrounding Baker Mayfield, nothing against Baker Mayfield. But Baker Mayfield, he's a solid backup. That's what he is. The idea that Baker Mayfield should get a big contract because he's led this team to an 8-8 eight and eight record in that horrible division, it's a little ridiculous. Tampa Bay at this point to me they're just floundering they're going nowhere they don't have much of a future sitting at 8-8 eight and eight, gonna get a mid first round pick I will take Carolina in this game to cover possibly win outright I didn't predict it but plus, plus five and a half we found value on Carolina in previous games in the second half of the year plus the points they've done well against the spread I'll take them here in the last game of the season moving on to number three it is the Jaguars traveling to Tennessee, and I do like Tennessee. They're a random, weird team, but the Titans do seem to play well at home, sitting at 5-11, and 11, certainly in position to get a top 8 or top 9 pick in the draft, but they're not going to give up. They've got a good head coach. They've got a young quarterback, and I think they could potentially win this game outright and cause havoc in the AFC playoff race. The Jaguars losing this game. You would have either Indianapolis or Houston, whichever team won that game, winning their division because Jacksonville would fall to 9-8. and eight. I do love Tennessee. Kind of a similar spot to Carolina. Plus the 5, plus the 5.5. These are good, good value games. Home teams against the spread plus 5 is great. Give me Tennessee. Jacksonville dealing with the Trevor Lawrence injury, possibly coming back, but he's been banged up throughout the entire second half of the year. It'll be very interesting. Good value on Tennessee to keep that game close. Moving on to number two, it is Atlanta traveling to New Orleans. I'm not a fan of, you know, minus three and a half, but in a situation like this, this is me just fading Atlanta. I did the same thing last week. You had Chicago home three-point favorites against Atlanta. I went in on them, and I was proven right. And this is another situation. I just think Atlanta has a terrible coaching situation. I'm going to continue to fade them, even though three and a half isn't a great number. If it's 27-24, you lose. But I have faith in New Orleans at home, still with a chance at the division to win this game relatively easily. And we would expect the Pan the or excuse me the Falcons to make big changes, get a new quarterback in the offseason. But I do like New Orleans in this one. Three and a half just isn't enough. It was like if it was five and a half or six, 
I would say, okay, maybe Atlanta, but I think New Orleans can cover a three and a half point spread. And then moving on to number one, this is the other kind of wonky game with Baltimore having a bunch of players likely sit out. This is a Saturday 430 game, the first game of week 18. I do like Baltimore plus the four. Now, obviously, the analytics are completely meaningless. Baltimore starting their backups, but even their backups should do well enough. The Pittsburgh team, there seems to be some revisionist history with them. Like Mason Rudolph, he's had a few good games, but Mason Rudolph is not a very good NFL quarterback. Okay, there's a difference between having one good start, two good starts, versus putting it together for five or six straight weeks. The Steelers, they can win this game, but four points against a solid, well-coached Baltimore team at home final game of the regular season. Give me the value with Baltimore, even with their backups. The Steelers, again, they can still win this game, but four points is just too much for me. I was also considering the under 33 and a half, I want to say, or was the over-under in this game 36? I believe the over-under in this game is 36. Let me just check really quickly. Yeah, the over-under in this game is 36 and a half, and 66% of the money is on the under, which makes sense, but I decided not to do the over-under and just take Baltimore plus the four. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.